This presentation is brought to you by the Beljansky Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. Is it possible to sleep your way to better health? Yes. Good. Blessed to convince you of. Okay. What if I told you the secret of health was to smoke more cigarettes? Maybe thalidomide, ingestion, more fluoride. Would you believe any of that? We did all this in the past. This was at some point part of the paradigm. Okay. What if I told you that right now you are sitting in some of the worst toxins to your health right now? They're in your home, they're in your work, they're probably in your pocket or your pocketbook. You're completely unaware of the theft of your health. You may have made this toxin a part of your life. You may even be addicted to this toxin. You could always wait 80 years until the overwhelming evidence is so great that just like tobacco, we put a Surgeon's General warning on this stuff. Timing is everything. As a sleep physician, you realize when you do something is more important than what you do. Your body is paying attention. I'm a medical doctor. I'm board certified in ear, nose, and throat and sleep medicine. And I consider myself somebody who took the red pill because I asked a lot of questions because I saw, I saw stuff that I didn't know an answer to. People are fatter, sicker, more cancer, more, autoimmun more autoimmunity, and this is happening at younger and younger ages. It doesn't make sense. So what's the answer? We don't have any answers. My field has not given us the solution. That's why you guys are here. And here's what I find. Pillow time versus quality sleep. I sleep great, doc. I'm okay. No, you put your, hello, your pillow, your head to the pillow, and you get that many hours until you take it off the pillow. Is it quality? We don't know. You don't know. You may think it's quality. It may not be. And so when I ask these questions, I look for the answers. And there's lots of books on this stuff. Publications from the 50s and 60s that have answers to your health problems. Why have we never heard of them? So I'm going to give you the secrets right up front. Why? Because you guys are probably tired. And I don't want you to forget that this is the most important slide. We evolved from great apes at the African Rift eating seafood. The DHA went into our brains. And that's why we have a big brain. That's why we can make the decisions we make today and choose to do stuff that breaks nature's laws. Circadian rhythms are your body's controllers. They control everything, and they're driven by light frequencies. So what do we know about light? That's the question. Mitochondria are the energy producers of the cell. They sense your environment, and they determine the biochemical outcomes. We're going to talk more about them later. You may not know a lot about them, but quantum biology also known as biophysics. This is a young burgeoning field, and this is the foundational elements of health. I didn't learn about physics in medical school, but these are the processes that work. Light and electrons are not driven by biochemistry. Here's the good news. People are not broken. If you have an illness, it is not your fault. Your environment is causing this, okay? It's called epigenetics. Your environment triggers the genome. We have all this dark matter in our genome. We don't know. We call it the junk DNA. It's not junk. It is the roll of the dice when nature says, hey, we need to find a solution to a new problem. And that's where we go. And we're finding solutions. And the solutions are your illness. The good news, people are slowly catching on. The Nobel Prize was just awarded for the circadian mechanism. I hope that people will start to pay attention to this. This is what I had been told, food and exercise, right? Let's get thinner. Let's just eat less, eat better, exercise more. Well, I didn't find that to be true in my life, and many of you probably are here because you didn't find that to be true either. So calories in, calories out, is that the solution? Just exercise more? If food is energy, then how is it broken down? Does it break, get broken down to carbohydrates? Sure. But where is the energy made? And it's not carbohydrates that the mitochondria looks at. That's the powerhouse of the cell. It's electrons. What do we know about electrons? Ask your doctor about electrons, you'll get a pretty dumbfounded look. 
So it's time to learn the truth. Your eye is not just a camera, okay? The most important function that your eye has is a clock, okay? And until you merge that into your head, you're gonna continue to see the results that you get because this is what determines how your metabolism, how your immune system, how your hormones are. I'm gonna explain this in a way that most people understand. GPS. There's a clock in the sky that runs 36 or 37 microseconds faster than the clock down here. It communicates to your phone and with three different signals, the difference in time, because it takes a little bit longer, it can figure out and triangulate where you are. Guess what? You're a GPS system. The master clock you have is at your brain. It's in the SCN, suprachiasmatic nucleus, and that's got to run faster than all the other clocks. Why? Because that's how you know what time it is. And every gene in your body has a clock gene associated right before it does something. Your body wants to know what time it is before you do it. So you have a rhythm. There's an optimal time to eat, to drink, to have concentration, to have exercise. Your body was built to maximize these things at certain times. Humans are the only animal dumb enough to think we have control over it. This is hard to see in the back, but this is the most important slide. Why? Light goes through the eye into the clock. That's what determines whether it's day or night in your mind's eye. Okay? The clock is also connected to the paraventricular nucleus. That's a big fancy part of the brain that's connected to your nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system. Anybody here think they have adrenal fatigue? Anybody? Okay, great. Light in your eye overstimulates that nucleus, which drives your adrenal system. Doesn't sound like a good idea. Always being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Okay? That same light connects to your pituitary gland. That might be important, because it makes all these chemicals sex hormones, testosterone, growth hormone, thyroid hormone, anybody care about those hormones? Okay, metabolism. Here it is. This is a fancy slide, but it tells you clocks determine your insulin sensitivity and your mitochondrial output, that's your energy. The day and night determines how you metabolize not only glucose, but fats. Got high fat, too much fat in your diet, maybe you got bad circadian rhythms. Melatonin. It's an unusual, underrepresented, under, not, poor, not well understood hormone. It's a hormone. Okay, it's what gives you day and night, yes. It increases cell regeneration, that means healing. Controls mitochondrial repair, that's what generates energy for the healing. It's an antioxidant, people taking all these vitamins, it's right there. It's an aromatase inhibitor, what does that mean? Too much estrogen, what does that lead to? Breast cancer. If you have breast cancer, you never heard this, Take a look online, because you're going to find out that it actually is going to help decrease the chances of you getting breast cancer. Stimulates the immune system, okay? And antagonizes cortisol, which is something that makes it hard for you to sleep. Here's the first time we made a mistake. Clothing. We came out naked. That's us. Now our solar panel has been hidden. This is how we tell time. Sun on our eyes and on our skin. Here's the next mistake we made. We thought we were smart enough that we'd invent some crazy lights so we could do things late at night. Edison, 1879, he made this popular. The problem is, is this light, and this light, and this light, and this light, we've gotten worse in terms of technology when it comes to circadian rhythms. Why? Because light is not what you think. You're not familiar with the way I look at light. White light is not white, it's made up of all the colors. This is the second most slide I'm going to show you. This, this is the sun, an even balanced, healthy diet of light. This is the incandescent light. Okay, it's a spattering, a lot of red, that's pretty good. This is LED and this is compact fluorescent. Big spikes in the blue, no red. You don't see any red on this side. Blue light is a signal for day. Blue light in the mitochondria generates reactive oxygen species. That means inflammation. Red light is the cure for that. So what's blue with no red equal? Disease, circadian misfiring. Blue light is the greatest suppressor of melatonin, which we want to have to sleep well. It destroys the gears of your clock me mechanism. So this means you are not able to generate all the t right timing of all the hormones and all the things that are supposed to happen. It's in all the artificial light you have. You're staring at it right now. 
Okay, I want you to get the picture that this is something that's in everyone's life. So, the light outside from the sun is very helpful, and we need something to help transform it into energy that our body uses. And this is, this is the answer, seafood, DHA. And when I say DHA, I don't mean in a pill, I mean in nature's package. And unfortunately, algae makes a form of DHA that's transformed just a little bit, just the chemical structure, just a bit, and seafood has that. So if you don't eat seafood, you're not able to harvest and use the light properly. Why is that important? Because we are humans, the pun is intended. This is not woo. This is a picture of a photomultiplier showing ultraviolet light emission from your fingers. Comes out of your face, comes out of your whole body. So when people say there's an aura, that's the aura. It's been measured. We found this first in the Russian ex uh, experiment that in, and found this out. We were slow to get to the table. This is not woo. This, is, this has been known for a long time. So what do you do? You got to get it from nature's package. The sun is how it was meant to be. And there's a lot about uh, light that I could talk about. That could be a whole other talk. But I will tell you that that's where you want to get it, not from in here. OK, by the way, water. Water absorbs light and becomes a battery. Anybody taught that in elementary school? Probably not. Gerald Pollack has a book that anybody could read that shows, and I was surprised about the properties of water that are quite unusual. But basically, light charge separates the positive and the, the negative in water, and that is a battery. And your body utilizes this for energy flow to keep you healthy. When you don't have that light making that battery happen, things don't go well for you. So mitochondria. We learned in medical school it's the powerhouse of the cell. And that's pretty much as far as it goes. But you need to know how to, how to make this thing work properly. This is, a, this is a map because when we, a guy who I'm going to show you in a second, Doug Wallace, he figured out that the mitochondria evolved over time too. And there are different mutations that occurred as we migrated across the entire planet. And those migrations are programming changes. So your environment matches your mitochondria. The amount of light, the amount of, the amount of uh, temperature uh, changes that you have, they match. This guy you'll see again, his name is Doug Wallace. He's at Penn. He's probably going to win a Nobel Prize. Okay. He figured out you get your mitochondria from your mother. He figured out the haplotypes. He's figured out how mitochondria contribute to illness. Why haven't we heard about it? Well, because we're all looking at the nuclear genome. This guy decided to look outside of that, and it's not in the DNA. This is a complicated slide to look at first, but quickly I'll make it very simple. The mitochondria, there's about 1,000 in every cell of your body. As they get broken down, when your cell divides, it just passes along the broken down mitochondria. And eventually, over time, you get more broken down. More broken mitochondria means brownouts of power in your cell. And Doug Wallace has shown that when you hit certain thresholds, illness ensues. And he's shown this very, very prolifically in his research. So what do I know about a mitochondria? I knew nothing other than what they taught me in med school. They're these four little complexes. They pass an electron. What does that all mean? Well, what you should know is that as the electron goes from here to here, it moves some hydrogens around. The distance here is very, very small. I'm talking angstroms. An angstrom is a 10 billionth of a meter. When you change the distance between these little small little proteins, one single angstrom, the power changes by 10. You know what makes the mitochondria swell? Look up. Do you want your power to go down by 10 because of the lighting in your house? So, I haven't covered it all. This is a very brief synopsis of some of the things I want you guys to understand when you enter my world. Life was designed to work in the visible spectrum of light. The electromagnetic spectrum is huge. We were also designed to work at 7.83 hertz. That's called the Schumann resonance. The bad news is modern living has plopped itself right in between. And if you ever try to listen to something when other people have music playing, you know it's hard. If you're at a crowded restaurant, it's harder to hear people. Signal to noise. When you add all this noise of modern life, your body has a hard time hearing the signals that it's looking. This is how your body signals and how energy flow works. And when you disturb it, illness ensues. I didn't talk a lot about EMF. That could be an hour-long talk in and of itself. But I'm just going to show you this one slide. 
there are non-thermal effects of electromagnetic frequencies. It has been shown for a very long time that it changes how calcium flows in the cells. If you don't think this is important, this slide is showing you that it's generating more damage and inflammation. So that means that the electromagnetic frequencies of the phone that you're carrying right now is causing inflammation somewhere in your body. It works in the inverse square law, so wherever it is is going to get the most damage. So whichever side of the head you put it on, whichever pocket, the youngsters who have it in their back pocket, in their front pocket, thanks, the infertility doctors will thank them. And uh, basically, it's been shown that the electromagnetic frequencies can cause a leaky brain barrier. People are worried about leaky gut. I'd be worried about toxins going into my brain. So you can follow the pack, or you can break free. What do you do? You got to be like the Sphinx. Nature's recipe really is the secret. And there's a lot of things that I go over with my clients and explain. But you got to learn how to use sun sensibly because you need that energy. I told you water uses sunlight to make energy. You're not making it under these lights. The light in your computers are no good. There are things you can do to block it. There's softwares that will take it out, okay? That graph is supposed to show you that we block that blue spike, okay? You can protect your eyes. Again, here are the secrets. To sum it up, quantum biology is light water magnetism. You need to realign your circadian rhythms if you want to be well and optimal because your body only knows when to make something when it's told. You need efficient mitochondria. Why? They are the powers. If you want to work with me, I do personalized health and wellness packages teaching you how to utilize in your life. Thank you.